talk some shit. Can you do that? I'll try. <laughs> That's what I need. Oh, I need some hardcore shit talking. All right, welcome to the Practical Pistol Show. My name is Ben Steger. I'm here to answer your shooting questions. Today, we got Grandmaster Nicky Antola. Hello, guys. We got Grandmaster Les Pepperoni. Fuck you, Ben. We got Alberta GM Jeff Chang. <laughs> Hey guys. <laughs> yes, guys. Alberta GM is a thing, and it's about as impressive of as a thing as I, I just made it sound. So, let's get rolling. Topic for today is going to be training without a timer. So, this, uh, I, I teed this up on a Duty Project forum. I'll put a link in the Link in the show notes so people can check this thread out. There's not a whole lot of crazy shit going on in there, but I. I teed this up because of a conversation that I had with Gaston uh, in talking about how to get faster. So I want to I want to put it to you guys and see what see see what you have to say about the idea of training without a timer uh, in order to get better for USPSA. Nick, so we talked in the pre-show. You don't do this. Well, <clears throat> I'll refine that very slightly. I I probably do about ten percent of my drive fire without a timer. That's about it. I, I do not shoot live fire without a timer. So, are we talking about both, or we, or either, or, or does it well, matter? Whatever you want to, however you want to come at it. <sighs> okay. So, <clears throat> personally, like I said, right, what I do now is I do a, a little bit of my dry fire without a timer when I really uh, just want to work on doing mechanical repetition correctly, as correctly as possible. And I don't. I don't even do that a large percentage of the time, but I like to I like to do that. I, I do it if um if I think I'm going if I'm if I think like my mechanics are breaking down and dry fire and I want to just back off and make sure that's gonna not happen for the next set of reps, I'll not use a timer. That's about it. That's about the extent of what I do right now in terms of training without a time. Okay. Less. Training without a timer. Yeah, I'm, i I'll kind of second what Nick said. I probably do about half of my dry fire training right now without a timer. But um, but to, to kind of make the discussion more interesting, I think this person who posted on a thread, I think they meant live fire, or they I think they inferred that how many people actually go to the range and and, uh, and practice without. Well, I, I teed up the thread, and I was talking about live fire, but or I was I should say I was thinking live <coughs> fire. Uh, but it was better to, you know, you come at it any way you want. Sure. So, kind of, kind of seconding exactly what Nick said. Um, you know, I think when there's a question about mechanic or, or whatnot, then sometimes it's just easier to 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 not bust out the timer and dry fire like that. Um, looking for a, a qualitative feel for a technique or whatnot, and I'll take that same idea and go to the range if I'm working on something where say I want to ensure that the points are going to be weighted a little bit more so I, I'm, I'm going to do my quantitative analysis based on you know am I getting the hits when I'm looking at something did I get into position you know did it feel right and then I'll start kind of circling back and trying to trying to um, put that on a timer and see where it's going to go but until I really kind of get the feel down for some things then sometimes uh, then I won't just run the timer Maybe just to give myself a start beep or something like that, but um, uh, but not looking at every every you know a, from position one to position two. I'll try and look at it more from a uh, qualitative uh, aspect first before I try and quantify it. Or if I'm really looking at like hits on the targets, then now uh, then I may just use the overall time really to see if I'm in bounds and then really pay attention to the hits more so than, than trying to get in a position or whatnot after I have a good quality to feel. So, right. so would, would you say you're doing that more in in drills or exercises that would be kind of super low hit factor if you were to, to run a timer on? Um, you know, interestingly enough, not always. Um, so, you know, we were talking about Drummond a little bit ago, I think in the last session, and, um, you know, he'll, he'll do something where he'll set up some tough targets or whatnot, and then he'll have like a couple of different positions that he tries to go and shoot through or, or, or shoot past. And, um, you know, if I'm going to approach like a, a barrier or something or a port, 
then um, then I just want to feel that qualitatively. I'm not I'm not eating a lot of time. I'm getting a good side picture, and I'm able to like shoot pretty in a pretty like what I feel like a pretty comfortable pace. And I'll go and check the targets to see if the hits are there. At that point, I'll feel like okay. Now I've got a good feel for this. I know I'm getting the position right. I know I'm getting um, getting getting good sight picture, good trigger press on all, everything that needs to happen there. Now I can actually start looking at grinding away a little bit at the time, you know, bit by bit. So I wouldn't say that those are super low hit factor drills or exercises that I'm working on. I would say that they're probably you know, you know, depending on like the setup. I mean, they could be weighted a little bit more towards you know speed component. Um, but you know, I I kind of I don't know if you're inferring that if you're going to shoot something with a very high hit factor, then the speed component is so important that you can't really neglect it. Um, but uh, I don't know if that's what you're you know kind of driving at a little bit. Yeah, but, um, it kind of was. Yeah. But uh, but I think you know even in things like uh, say for example, can you count? It's like a super high hit factor drill, right? Or a super high hit factor classifier. You know, qualitatively, if you blow the reload or if you blow the draw, then you know that you've got some problems. You don't necessarily need to run the timer to know that you, you kind of fucked up. So it's um, you know, in that case, you can actually work on trying to just get the relaxation for the reload right or for the draw right. But um, but even there, I think you know, not having to put everything under the microscope can sometimes be good. Although that that's you know, kind of a an opposite extreme. I, I don't think I'd run that drill without running the timer just just to see where it was. Okay, Jeff. Practicing without a timer. I don't really see the value in it, so I don't do it. I think I run everything with a timer. I mean, at the end of the day, what I'm practicing for uh, when I shoot a match, what I'm being evaluated is on would be the time and the score. So the score is always going to be there. So I'm going to look at a target, count up the score, tape up the non-alpha hits. But if we don't have a time, then there's really nothing for me to kind of gauge any improvements that I'm making, any adjustments I'm making to technique. So I do run everything with the timer because of that. All right, guys. This is good. So all of you have lined up pretty much where I thought you would. So now I will tell you my theory and why I did what I did, and I'll talk about me practicing without a timer. And you guys can, can tell me what you think about it. So... When I go shoot a major match, all I really care about is not making mistakes and shooting as many points as I can. The speed's going to be what it is. So, uh, well, two of you for sure are pretty experienced major match shooters. Um, when you go shoot, you just... I mean, the, 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 the times is what it is. You're going to go your speed, and you, you just try to kind of shoot the best you can at your speed. So when you come off a stage, you get handed your... <laughs> you get handed your score sheet if they're still doing paper scoring, and it's like, all right, I had this many alphas and this many Charlies and a you know a Delta or whatever, and my time felt good, or maybe or or I, or I fucked up that reload, so my time's a little slower than I feel it should be, or whatever. But it, pretty much the time is what it is, and, and the points, the you know you just try to shoot the best points you can. Is, is that how you approach it, Nick? Uh, do you think that way? Because that's you. That's that's my thinking when I shoot a match. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm really not not necessarily. I'm I'm looking at both looking at both factors. Uh, I'm, if I'm in if I'm in a squad with somebody who's you know I'm competing against them, I'm, I'm obviously looking at the head factor. But if I'm way deficient on points or time, I usually see that as a problem. So I'm, I can't say that I overly focus on one versus the other. All right, match. what about you, Les? You see, and I think this is why it's kind of important not to, um, I'll say that the bulk majority of my practice in the range is with a timer, but um, but it, I mean, you kind of hit the... Forget your practice. Do you shoot a match that way? No. I mean, you know, like I kind of, you know, the time is what it is. It's like, yeah, it's the consistency that I think is more important. That's what I'm looking for. Do they get my hits? Um, Wait, so you do shoot a major match. You're like looking at the... You, you just kind of come off and you're like, okay, well, I shot this many points, and, you know, your speed is what it is. Yeah, basically. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, if I'm shooting on a, on a squad with, like, a, another guy that's pretty switched on or with some open guys, and, you know, it's kind of like, okay, well, I'm a few seconds behind, all right, whatever. Um, yeah. 
you know, then then it's kind of giving you a little bit of a yardstick. But I don't I don't key into that. There's That's nothing you can do about your speed in that moment. Right? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so that, that, I, I think that, that's kind of coming back to it. I think this is why it's important to understand what that feel is qualitatively. Like, um, the, am I am I feel like I'm going through and getting all the you know like points that I'm looking for consistency wise. Right. I get it, Les. You're you're distracting me. We're gonna drive forward. <laughs> I, I had a I had an interesting experience. I'm sorry, bad. I, I'm going to lose my train of thought. I had a very interesting experience that shaped my shooting a lot. The first USPSA major match I shot. I was squatted with Manny and Ted, and probably a lot of people listening don't know who Ted is. Ted Puente? Yes, Ted Puente. Ted's fucking awesome. Yeah, he is. Uh, that was back in the, the era when Ted and Manny were pretty much inseparable when they shot matches, and they'd always shoot together, apparently. Yeah. And uh, Ted uh, won uh, limited nationals a few years after this. But... Uh, it was kind of like Manny shooting limited, Ted shooting limb 10. Uh, I it was the new guy on that squad shooting production. And what was really interesting to me is I'm watching these uh, these two guys who are both very fast. Manny's like crazy fast, and they're shooting the they're shooting the match. They're doing their thing, and Mr. President is very fast. Yeah, they're they're playing a game where they're just counting up their points down. That's it. So they get their score sheet. They're like, okay, I had uh, three Charlies and a Delta. That's six. And then if you had an extra shot, I think that counted as a Charlie as well. Mm -hmm. So they would just they'd score it up. And the guy who dropped the most points in the match, that guy's buying dinner. Mm -hmm. Period. That was the game they were playing. So while they were shooting the match, the speed was what it was. That was it. But, I mean, during the match, they're going to shoot the best points they can. And I was like, well, okay, that's that's interesting. And and from a match management perspective, that's the way I I shot my matches. I've always shot matches that way. I'm just going to don't fuck up, don't shoot penalties, shoot as many A's as you can for the whole match. That's that's the strategy that's, that's going to be good for you. Um, but a lot of times uh, I feel slow shooting this way. Uh, you guys following this? I feel slow yeah. at matches because I'm shooting as many A's as I can. Yeah? Yeah. So what occurred to me is that I should shoot in that mindset more. So if I have a timer at, during my practice and I just kind of cover up the time display, use it as a start beep, and then shoot, um, that's kind of the way I'd shoot in a major match. Is the time is going to be what it is, and I'm just going to shoot the best I can in that time. And by getting more experience shooting that way, like practicing that way, um, getting used to that, I'll get more comfortable shooting as many A's as I can and thus get faster with it. So that was the theory when I, when I tried this out. Did, Nick, did you follow that theory? Yeah, uh, up to a point. I, you know, I, okay. Okay. All right, so what I'm saying is if in practice it's hit factor, hit factor, hit factor, right? That's that's what I'm uh, thinking a lot. I, ma I make mistakes sometimes, but in practice... It sounds like you're just thinking about points, not hit factor. Right. In practice, it was hit factor, hit factor, hit factor. Then I go to the match, and it's points, points, points. Oh, okay. And I felt slow at the match. So then I was like, well, let's practice making it just points, 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 and that's it. You get that? Well, yeah, so... But getting back to the Manny thing, like... So what what drove you to actually feel like that was a good idea? Was the guy shooting the best points always winning the match too? Well, no, because those guys were fucking awesome. Yeah. That's why I'm like, watch those guys. I'm like, these guys are fucking awesome. Like, Manny right. is fast as balls. Okay. But they could like, have been playing any nuts. games, right? He's shredding nuts, and he's yeah. trying to shoot as accurate as he can. Mm -hmm. I mean, during the match, he's trying, and it was it was weird for me to watch somebody, like, Fly through a, a stage, be like, bah, 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 and he'd be like, and he'd be like, like, oh, I mean, I remember one time he like, he was shooting on the move through this this weird section, and he, he like ducked back and fired an extra shot and then kept going. It was indoors, you couldn't see your hits very well. I was like, what the hell just happened? And he like had edged a no shoot and he knew he did and he came back. I'm like, that motherfucker is on the sights. He's seeing everything that's happening. I'm I'm super impressed by all this. To, to watch uh, watch these much better shooters shoot, and I was like, if those guys going at that speed, their focus is all on points. That seems like a good idea to me. And then 
kind of I don't think you need to spend a lot of time in the sport or looking at scores to figure like, hey, it's just shooting really good points and not making mistakes. That's what's going to make you successful at like the sort of the super squad level. Mm-hmm. And that's that's where I wanted to be at anyway. So I was like, yeah. well, let, I'm just going to train myself like that. Okay. Les, what do you think of this? I agree. Yes. <laughs> I mean... All right. Yeah, good. But... What did you think of the training without a timer thing as a way to get there? So going at your match speed, just not using the timer. You know, I think, again, I think it's important to, to do it just because then you're going to focus on that qualitative aspect of shooting. Yes. And uh, and the more comfortable you get being able to do that qualitative, you know, like feeling good from that perspective, I think that's, that's a, a good thing. I think... At the same time, you know, there, there are times or stretches where, where the, the focus becomes on grinding down the time. I mean, for a long time I shot against Alex and, you know, I'd have better points but slower times and, and hit factor scoring. He just he, he kind of raped me on, on the matches and the stages and the whole nine yards and it's, it's still kind of like that. But um, <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. He's gotten better, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, 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 dude. He is fast. Um, but... Uh, but I mean, but that, that's, that's, you know, one facet to the equation was still just being able to to put together a good match, a solid match where, where everything was consistent, where you're running, running where everything is feeling good. Um, that that was that's a good place to be too. So, I think one thing to, that's probably true that you want to point out here is like the the better you get overall, probably the more the more bias you you trend toward needing points and fewer mistakes. So, you yeah. know, I don't know that, you know, a brand new shooter is going to want to focus 100% on points. Whereas, you know, super squad level guy, probably that is your primary. Well, I just want to point out, Nick, um, in a roundabout way, training without the timer was a way for me to get faster. Okay. The How's point that? of it was to get faster, not to shoot better points. But at the same time, how does that happen if you don't have that quantitative means of analyzing your technique and and what and what hit factor you're getting. I mean you can easily get the maximum number of points. Right. But you're you're hitting these targets at too low a speed to to be successful at a match. Well the, the first thing the first part was my theory when I tried this was I'm gonna shoot um I'm not trying to analyze like how fast I'm going. My theory was the speed's there. Like I know, I know from my own training. Like if I set up something and there's some speed goal, I can do it. It's not a question of that if I if I really relax and and you know let it flow, let it ride, I'm going to be able to do it. I'm going to be able to shoot whatever pace I want. It was more about being able to manifest that speed in a match, right? Because you you in, in a match, it's like you know a making a making a mistake is terrible. To, to you know, shooting a miss or like you know, biffing a stage up somehow, that's going to be really bad. So if I shoot in the mindset of I just don't want to make a mistake here, but do that during my practice, maybe I'll get more comfortable doing that and I'll be able to go faster. Are you following the math on that, Jeff? Yep. It was it's mental training, not so much building technical skill or. Uh, trying to get faster mechanics or, or something like that. Okay. Yes. Is this is this is this sounding crazy to you guys? No, I, I agree. You, you know, I, this I, is the only guy who likes this. You know, I gotta agree though. I mean, like Nick, you know, put up three targets like an El Prez and, and and shoot him. What are your splits and transitions? I mean, they're they're going to be. Like if you're measuring them or you're not measuring them or, or whatever, I mean they're like they're they're going to be pretty consistent within what like four percent of like what your what your overall average and and being able to like grind out those six shots are. I mean, but the the point is is how often do you do you you know grip it and rip it on an elk press and you feel like ah shit my grip was a little off on the draw or my reload was a little funky you know getting it in the magwell or whatever. Um, you know, I think there, there's a, a lot to learn there, too, but 
I, I don't know. I, I think um, once you're used to shooting at a certain speed, then I think it's gonna you're gonna kind of put it together anyway. Now it's just focusing on like you know, did I fall short of where I was supposed to stand, or you know, look, looking at some of those those points or like those those uh, um, those goals or whatever. I think that that's worth. Yeah, I mean, it sounds to me as a guy who's never really done that. Um, Nick, you know, maybe forget, I'll try. For, yeah. forget about shooting without a timer. Let me tell you what, what I was trying to do here. And, um, what is, what's your fastest El Prez you've ever shot in practice hanging them all on the paper? Like 389 or something like that. All right, what's the average? Uh, I'm sure you know. I'm, I'm asking because I'm <laughs> sure you know. You can give me a, ball, you can give I mean, me a ballpark I mean, average. Average for just trying to hang them on paper? No, probably. no, like average for just oh. shooting. I don't, uh, uh, I don't know, probably a little under mid, mid to upper fours if I'm you know, trying to hit points, I guess. All right, and, and like, let's say, everything. what would you be co- What would you be happy with in a match? <sighs> Anything under five in a match, I'm probably... See, see, like all the, you see how you're giving me all these numbers? Yeah. Because you've got the timer, you're watching that stuff. Right. Yeah. Once you have all that information and your skills are pretty well plateaued, yeah. well, what I'm what yeah. I'm talking about is trying to find a way to get the average lower, to get like like in a match, like get me just get me closer to that low four second run. You know what I mean? Let's find a way mentally to to let that happen. You know what I mean? Or make that happen. However you want, however you want to think about it. And I think finding different training techniques. Or trying different things, we got to try and get your get your match runs to be better somehow. Mm. Yeah, because yeah. what what you're well, you've seen you, now that you've been on the B squad, and you see how it is. Like again, you see guys shooting uh, like at at this kind of the competing for a national title level. It's not about what you can do. You know, it's not. It's like yes, yeah, so about how are we going to pull this out. Mm-hmm. How, like, what are you going to do in that moment? Yeah, yeah. And that's that's exactly what I was going to say earlier. It sounds to me like, as a guy who who, admittedly, has never done this, it seems to me, thinking about it now, that it would be more beneficial to people who already are pretty pretty set on their on their speed. They've they've kind of gone to the end of that road. They're, you know what what you're supposed to do and how how it feels when you hit a good reload or a good movement or whatever speed wise and, and you really just need to focus on the points I guess does that make well, sense well I mean yeah I mean this is about more than just training without a timer it's like let's try different things like whatever it is you know training with different time limits maybe uh, only worrying about the time and not giving a shit about the hits as long as they're on the brown or something like like, like lots of different things you could try right yeah Okay. Yeah, I mean, so, like, so trying different things to get better, I, th- I think that's a, a smart thing to do. Uh, Jeff, what's your reaction? You li- I, you've squatted with me at a match, after which I've been doing this for a couple weeks. What did you think? I, I see why you go about things this way. I think as a shooter at a much lower level, it's like where I would find the time at a match is literally in the time. Right, I would I would try to cut times. I try to do things faster in order to push myself. That's where I can push myself to. You know, if I watch someone have blaze through a stage and it, it worked that great for them, how I would try to beat them is I cut my time. Right, so it's going about it in a very different way from from this knowing knowing the speed that you can do a certain skill or or shoot a certain aspect of a stage at. And then doing that consistently, uh, for me to find time is really to cut time. If that makes any sense. Yeah, of course. But, I mean, but like mentally, people are in a lot of different places. You are, I would put in the hoser camp, right? So you tend to be fast as shit, but then the mistakes happen, right? Right. Yeah. I'm I'm the other way. I'm a turtle. Like I'm really deliberate by nature, and I'm trying to find ways for me to go faster. Right. Which really counterintuitively, for me, was taking away the timer. That's hmm. fucking weird. That's weird as shit. But that's that's the way it goes sometimes. Uh, Les, you're a smart dude. 
Can you think of any? Uh, can you think of weird stuff or maybe a little bit different stuff that you would try to get better, or faster, more accurate stuff that you would tell people to try? That I would tell people to try. Yeah, yeah. depending on the person's personality type. Yeah, I mean it's. Uh, I think a lot of people are very analytical. Like I would say, Jeff maybe. Um, <laughs> Not about shooting. Right. Um, He's like, fucking go faster. Right. The uh, you know a lot of people are very analytical analytical about um, about their shooting about you know putting everything under the microscope times etc. Um, I see a lot of value in, in learning how to do things in a. Uh, also, just like you know, what a qualitatively better feel is, or can you can you do something more consistently? Um, you know, I think it's I think it's something to be experimented with that uh, that people shouldn't be afraid to put it aside a little bit and try that. Or if you're really focused on speed for a lot of the time, then maybe focus on on points. You know, do something which is going to be the the opposite or the deficiency. Or uh, don't get fixated on the drill for for so long. Mix it up a little bit. You know, don't don't make it so that it's the same constantly. I think there's there's some value there too. But it's just kind of a blanket statement. Not speaking to anybody in particular. Too bad. All right, Nick. Anything else to say about this? Uh, maybe training without a timer specifically, or in general, trying different training methods, stepping aside, stepping away from uh, doing the hit factor, scoring that up all the time? Um, I mean, not, nothing, I can't think of anything else uh, I really have to say about it right, right now. I'm, I, I probably will be trying some of this you're kind gonna, of stuff over the winter, though. You're going to try this? Well, you, yeah, you yeah. tend to be, I want you to try this for me. So you tend to be more deliberate by nature, like where you're kind of the hit everything type of a guy? I'm a, I, yeah, I trend toward the, the turtle side. Naturally. Yes. Yes. So, you know, if I would be curious to see what would happen if you take the timer away in your practice and see what that does for your match pace. I don't know. Maybe it won't help. Uh, so, so tell me this: how do you, how do you uh, how do you determine if this has helped you or not? Uh, because then I go faster in matches. If, okay, this is like what Les is talking about. It's subjective feel. So yeah. in, instead of instead of shooting a match feeling like oh man I got to get these alphas like you know rolling up on some targets like I need these I need to get all these alphas like shit I better not drop any points I feel slow um, it's it's about kind of letting it go a little bit more and it's it's as I get more comfortable shooting and you know getting alphas just kind of focused on that in my practice. Then when when I go to a match and it's like oh okay now I I I'm comfortable with the idea that I'm just shooting for alphas, and I feel I feel better about it. I don't feel like crazy slow or something. You see what I'm saying, Nick? I would I would say it sounds definitely counterintuitive counterintuitive the way you're you're laying it out right now. Of course. If you're so if, if you're it practicing, was intuitive every motherfucker would do it. If you're practicing without a timer, the only the only metric of success you have is shooting A's. And well, and no extra shots on steel. Right, which is kind of the same thing, I guess. So, so then it seems like over time you're naturally going to stress only shooting A's if you do that for any consistent length of time, right? I mean, I guess. Uh, so it, I that, suppose. So that, yeah. And you feel that makes you go faster. It that? makes me more comfortable going at that speed in a match. It's not going to make me faster yeah. in practice. In pra I, mean, I bet my practice runs would be slow. Okay. But so in, in match, in my my match runs are actually yeah. faster so because it's gonna it's gonna make you shoot A's faster. It's not gonna make you shoot an overall lower time. Oh yeah, lower time through. in the match, for sure. Well. A lower time in the match. See, the thing is, you're not. I, I'm not faster when I'm practicing. Right, I'm shooting. Let me put it this way: I'm shooting in my match mindset in practice, more, thus getting more experience with the match mindset, and being faster with it, more comfortable. Okay. 
And that I, makes more sense. That makes more sense. There you so go. I, so at a practice level, how do you how do you ramp it up? Say, how, how do you push yourself? How do you continually improve? Do you just kind of keep going faster until you, it falls apart? When you start missing? When you start not getting alphas? And then you back back a notch? Or, uh, well, I would mean if, if I want to what like get increase my the mechanical speed? Sure. Yeah, just it's like hey, I need to be faster. Go faster, you know. Just shoot faster, and then what happens is I start to not be in control of, you know, where the sights are going, and I see things kind of loosening up, and I kind of work. That's to me. I think you want to get right to the edge, right where you're not quite in control anymore, and that's where you want to work, and s start to get in control at that pace, at that distance, whatever it is you're doing. Les, you've done a lot with this, yeah. Yeah, I don't think you want to go... I don't think you need to be shooting misses every run. You probably don't... That's not super beneficial, but being right on the edge of where you can't quite make the bullets go where you want anymore. You know, where there's misses and... Or I should say Charlie's, Deltas, that sort of thing, a lot of them. Does that make more sense, Jeff? It does, but I. it still seems like if that's, if that's the... That's the way to increase you, mechanical speed, yeah? Like, if you're going to analyze your practice sessions that way, then what's the benefit in taking a timer out of the equation? Well, it's about changing your match mindset. Let me put it to you like this. So um, if I'm shooting El Prez, like Nick's talked about, my numbers would be pretty similar to him. Uh, like, cold. Like, shooting El Presidente cold. Like, if I'm low fours, that's pretty good. I'm not... I can't recall being under four cold. But I know that I can shoot it in low... Low four is pretty good. If I, uh, I'm if probably I, not getting a lot of fours cold. <laughs> well, sure. then, if I okay, then yeah. if I, then if I start to uh, round it, round off the edges a little bit, like uh, make sure as soon as I see my fiber coming onto the first target, uh, as I draw onto it, and I start ripping shots right then, and then make sure as soon as I get the reload stuck, I I come back on target and I don't really wait for things to line up quite perfectly anymore, I start shooting again, I can get under four. Uh, if I get really warmed up, really comfortable, and really relaxed, I can shoot it in three and a half. Okay, I know all of these numbers. Does that make sense, Jeff? Yep. All right, so I know, I know where those numbers are at, and I know what I need to do to produce those runs. But I also know that there's no fucking way in hell I'm going to shoot three and a half at a match because of all the stuff I just described I have to do. And it would be extremely difficult to shoot under four in a match, because just the idea that I'm going to let that let that stuff happen, with so with the match riding on the with the match riding on it, to turn around and pull the gun up and not take the time to confirm anything and start shooting and then reload and keep going and hit a clean reload and all that all the stuff that has to go right to make that happen in a match, uh, I don't think it is going to happen for me not right now. Right. You follow me there, Jeff? So that's that's the mechanics of it. That's the mechanics of making that run happen. And then, then, then we're in a place where it's like, well, get me closer to those runs in a match, right? Let's make let's make the match run better, because that's really what we're looking at here. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, you're obviously trying to shoot A's on the match run. Well, sure. I mean, I'd be fine with, like, uh, low fours with, like, four or five C's. That's pretty good. I'd take that. I think I think instead of saying trying to shoot A's in the match run, Nick, I think it's more trying to shoot consistently in the match run, where you're not gonna you're not gonna be too far off what the points are, and you're not gonna fuck up the draw or the reload or you know anything you know the gun handling there. I think that that's an important point, or that's that's a point of distinction that I think I would make. Ben, would you agree? Uh, to not fuck up, yeah. Yes. Correct. <laughs> well, that no. Uh, I mean, you have to gun handle at a speed that's going to be consistent in a match. Yeah. So, right. there it goes. so yeah. All right. Well, let's move on to a shooting question, guys. I mean, I, I'm just putting this out there because I started up this topic, and this is where I was at when I put it up there, and I kind of wanted to get everyone's take on it, see your reaction. I know I didn't explain any of this in the thread, and that was intentional. I just wanted to see what your reaction would be, guys, and it was good. It makes for some good conversation. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next question. 
This is my first full year of shooting USPSA, and I have really made some improvements. I can get top five on a stage or two at a match against M's and even GM's or two. But it's a given that I will shit the bet on two or three stages as well and kill my overall match score. I'm encouraged that I know I can hang with the cool kids, but it kills me uh, that I can't seem to string it together for a solid match. Have any of you been through something like this? If so, did you do anything specific that helped you through it? Uh, Jeff, I think you're perfect to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm exactly in that position. Uh, I still am. Um, I I tend to always be in the top three, I'd say, but it's mistakes to happen on one or two stages that cost me a match win. And quite honestly, the way the way that I have been able to get around this and was simply trigger time, right? To shoot, to work on drills, to be comfortable with the gun. And I guess going back to what this entire conversation has been about, the knowing the mindset, I suppose, of, of knowing what I can do and just performing consistently. Yeah. Uh, Les, what do you think about this? You know, I think this is a, it's a mindset issue. Um, yeah. I think, uh, I think kind of putting the timer aside and, uh, and practicing for that consistency, being able to, to pound out match run after match run after match run is kind of where it's at. So. I think there's also a couple of drills that, that are really good for mental consistency, such as the dot drill. Um, just because the stakes get higher and higher as you kind of get closer to the end of the drill, I think that that's something that's pretty good. You can also see if you're having like a lapse of attention when when all of a sudden, you know, on the fourth dot, you kind of lose it and, and now you've kind of fucked yourself at that point. Um, so I think kind of chipping away at that, um, that particular drill is kind of a, a useful thing too. So, yeah. Yeah, Antola, what do you think? Uh, I think that's a completely natural part of of anyone's progression, really. I mean, I, I I doubt that anyone that competes at a high level today would say they didn't go through a phase where they were killing it on some stages and and you know trash in other stages. You know, I I yeah. definitely did that early on. So it's. You know, uh, uh, anyone will tell you like, the, and we've already discussed this, but you know, once you get to the top, it's whoever whoever makes the fewest mistakes. Everyone pretty much, more or less, has the same skills. Can do some stuff at pretty much the same level. You gave them five tries, but who can do it on demand? So, you know, like Jeff said, I, for me at least, it's just about getting in good quality hard practice and knowing. Knowing uh, what you can do, what you can't do, under pressure and on demand, and uh, having the confidence to, to execute it. that comes from good practice and being immersed in, in the sport. Uh, all right. So, reading this email, uh, I, I'm glad I got this because there's a lot of people that think this way, and this is a good time for me to go on a rant about it. So, a guy put in the email says. I'm not trying to shit on this guy, by the way. I just want to address his mindset. I'm encouraged that I know I can hang with the cool kids because he has a good stage, right? He can hang with the cool kids. Uh, let me let me break the hard truth to you. Uh, because you shoot, uh, you have, you score well on a couple stages in a match, like relative to uh, much better shooters, you can't hang with them. Uh, I've compared this to like you you're playing a completely different game than what the top guys are trying to do. It'd be like if people are running the, uh, running a marathon and you jump in at mile 10 and you run for a few hundred yards and you keep up with them for a while and then you, you know, kind of duck off, you're like, yeah, I can run just as fast as those guys. Right? That's not the game they're playing, dumb shit. Like, that's not what they're trying to do. You're trying to shoot a good match. All right? If you are approaching that match in such a way that you crash and burn on a few stages, that's your skill level, that's where you are. And that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that, but you need to get it through your head. It's You, you can't hang with them yet. And you need to make an improvement on your skill level. This isn't, I mean, this isn't like some mystery. It's like, well, I, I go hard on these, I mean, there's a lot of guys like this who are very, shoot aggressively, 
and there's a really high risk of making mistakes when they do that, and then when the inevitable mistakes happen, they're like, oh man, I fucked up. Uh, I need to work on my mental management or something. It's like, no, just practice. Like Jeff said, spend, get some trigger time, practice, you'll get more consistent, and you will make fewer mistakes, but uh, the game you are playing is to try and shoot a good match, to be consistent across all the stages, as consistent as you can be. And that's what you're trying to do. I beat on one stage! What's like, that? You're the best! I beat Ben on one stage! Yeah, it's just like... Uh, My crowd was faster than Nick! I can yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, unless you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. That that mindset is just, it's like destructive. It's retarded. There's so many guys in the sport who go to major matches and shoot like once you get to like the 80, 85 percent level, you'll have some stages that you're great on, and you're like, well, if I just took these couple stages out of this match, I would do so much better. And it's like, oh, you fucking idiot. No shit, like, right? Yeah, no shit. So wait, so you get to go in and you're just going to attack the match super aggressively and then you get a couple mulligans or whatever, a couple uh, stages you take out of there and then, then you were awesome? Like It doesn't really work that way. No. No. <laughs> Jeff, was that pointed <laughs> enough for you? <laughs> it wasn't directed at you. But there you go. Pretty solid Wait, rant, actually. It's was, it was, it was well played. I like it. Was it well played? Yeah. <laughs> There's so many guys like this. How are these motherfuckers? Like they, how many people go to a major match and they swing for the bleachers on every yeah. stage? They hook up on one and post that video. And it's like, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I mean, you do that if you want to do that. Like, but that's crazy. I mean, if you think that's cool. But yeah, when I, you know. What I will say though is that I think when when a guy is getting pretty good, you know, even if you kind of shit the bed on one stage, just kind of let it go and, and uh, you know, get your get your deck of cards straight again here and uh, and uh, play the next hand and see where that takes you. But um, um, don't let that one thing kind of ruin the rest of the match where you bounce back. But but at the same time, you know, don't hang your hat on just the very best. Um, but yeah, don't hang your hat on the best stages. Yeah, exactly. You know, just like you, you can't let the the worst stage ruin the match for you either. You know, it's uh, it's not good. You gotta learn to just make it consistent. <laughs> learn to make it well. That's through like ro- lots of repetition, right? Yeah. yeah. Repetition gonna, practices. That's gonna build consistency. That's right. And you're gonna break a few eggs at a few matches, right? Well, yeah, of course. Those omelets, and uh, they're not <laughs> first time baking that cake, and it's gonna be like. Yeah, it's, 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 I, I think it's a natural part of progression. You know, I, I don't know too many people that didn't go through that, or uh, that I'm aware of. But you know, up to up to a point, is that the better you get, the less the less room for screwing up you have, and eventually, it's kind of like the. The chain is only as strong as its weakest link, right? Well, look stage. at look at some recent match results in the in the U.S. Uh, Nick, they're I just say in production specifically, like there's like a cunt hair uh, between winning and losing these days. You know, yeah. it's not much. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. I so think part, I think part of the problem is if if you're a if you're a shooter who's Doing this, and you know, you're you're performing well at stage or two, and you're shooting a club match with maybe five, six stages. You know what? You can pull off a pretty good. You have the chance to pull off a pretty good result overall. Well, you mean you could hurt. win and be terrible? I, it's possible. Yeah, I think it's possible, isn't it? Oh, of if course. You, if you only have six stages <laughs> in the match, and and your aggressive plan gets you wins on, on three of them and just happens to work out that you can win a match like that. All right, the moment you bring that, when Sorry. you bring that into a, into a major match of 18-plus <laughs> stages, it's, it's a different game. Jeff, I'm going to do another thing for you. Another rant. You've just got it. Stage wins are not relevant. They don't fucking matter. They're cool, I guess, but for match score, they're not relevant. That's it. Yep. They don't fucking matter. <laughs> Nick, you agree with that? Uh, yeah. I mean, it, consistency is that's what matters. How many stages did you win at nationals, Nick? <laughs> None. Did you do well in the match? Uh, yeah, I did all right. like top sixteen, pretty fucking yeah. good, right? Yeah, 
I almost, I almost won two stages, but no, I had no stage wins. God damn it, dude. It doesn't matter <laughs> if you win them or not. It's not, it doesn't matter. If you Why almost won them. I found that one stage! <laughs> <laughs> if you won the stage, you'd have basically the same number of match points, right? Uh, well, one, yeah, well, one was, we discussed this. I, I had one where I lost about 15 match points. Oh, Jesus Christ. One freaking grease ring no shoot that pissed me off hardcore. Yeah, so yeah. If you hadn't shot that no shoot, <laughs> you won I, that almost, stage. I almost you missed it. Off. I almost missed it. Yeah, if we, so if we take that. that one stage out, right? <laughs> if we take that one stage out, I wouldn't. I would have almost only won one stage, right? Some right. Shit. No, it's. No, it's uh, consistency is obviously the, the key point. I mean, you you look at. I don't think that you're going to go through match results from a match with any you know high level competition there and see if the winner is like shooting you know under about you know eighty five percent on really anything. You know. uh, all right, Jeff, you were making a point about how you can win stages at club matches by uh, going crazy. Please continue with that. I said my bit about the, the stage wins. <laughs> well, I think for someone shooting with this kind of mindset, it doesn't help that you can do this and win win a match, right? Because that kind of reinforces the idea that you can afford to make mistakes as long as you win big enough on other stages. Problem is when you enter a major match where there's a lot more stages where and this doesn't hold up. Right? There's, but, there's a lot more stages and there's a lot more. So, oh, guys, I think I get what you're saying. So. Um, go fast enough and you'll absorb the misses? Well, no, like, in, in a club match, anything can happen, right? I mean, you could go to a club-level match and shoot perfect every stage. You could tank every... I mean, it's the, the match is short. Anything can happen, right? Right. So when you go to a major match where you're going to shoot 15, 20 stages, something like this, um, if you have a weakness, if especially if it's a well-designed IPSC match, like the Alberta Provincials, right, Jeff? If it's like uh -huh. that... It's a well-designed IPSC match. They're going to test all your skills, and if you suck at something, they will find it. Yep. And then after you train wreck out on that stage, you probably won't be able to win the match. That's exactly it. All right. But a club match, you know, hey, what the hell, maybe you can. <laughs> and that's the problem, because it then reinforces the idea that you can absorb those, those issues by shooting fast and being aggressive. So what's the solution? Shoot major matches. Shoot major matches. I was going to be like, just have Jeff show up at your club match and be like, no, you won this match, but you're terrible. Believe me. You're it's so kind of, bad. It's kind of a double-edged sword, right? So if you if you trash one stage at a club match, that's one-sixth of your match that's trashed. Whereas, you know, at a major, it's only one-eighteenth or whatever. But you have more chances to screw up at a major as well. So, yeah. Percentage-wise, you're probably going to come to the same... The same place anyway. <laughs> yeah, eventually. If you shoot a, a large enough sample of club matches, I'm sure your weaknesses will be exposed as well. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else to say about this, Les? Or you had enough? You don't give a shit. Are you back shooting now? Yeah, finally. All right, good. Berettas. You're back on the Berettas? Yeah. Dude, they're so good, right? Um, Everyone thinks you're at a disadvantage, but you're not, because your guns are actually better than theirs. <laughs> right? Why are you laughing, Jeff? <laughs> because what I'm saying is ridiculous. <laughs> All, right. All right, Jeff, we put him up. We pretty well wrapped this up. Yeah. All right, good. Thank you for coming on, Jeff. We uh, people do get you know, like get more scrubs on there, and I'm like, oh, okay. I know some guys from Canada. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't need to be out of sorts, but that's that's the reality. All right, uh, Nick. Anything else to say about this? Uh, no. All right, good. All right, guys. If you have a shooting question you want to send to me uh, uh, and have me put it to some scrub shooters from Canada. Head over to bensteiger.com and uh, send me that shit, and uh, we would love to talk about it. 